Welcome to the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast with your host, Breakup Bestie, aka me, Kendra. Breakups are hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Each week, I will be taking you through a different topic as it relates to breaking up, healing from heartbreak, growing in your single life, dating, and getting back into happier and healthier relationships. The goal of this show is to provide support, hope, tips, and to remind you that above all, this too shall pass. Welcome back to another episode of the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast. I'm sure we have all come to the realization that Valentine's Day is right around the corner. I'm also very aware that if you are a listener to this podcast, Valentine's Day is not necessarily going to be your favorite holiday of 2021, and that is okay. And today, I actually was going to do the entire episode on Valentine's Day, but I thought, you know what? Let's expand this to just cover how to get through the tougher days of your breakup, because that can cover Valentine's Day holidays, your birthday, your ex's birthday, anniversaries, or just like a regular old Tuesday that just feels really hard. So I'm going to give you a bunch of tips and tools that you can utilize on days that feel really tough, including Valentine's Day coming this week. And speaking of Valentine's Day, I want to make sure that you guys feel as equipped and supported as possible. So I have two things going on for you guys for Valentine's Day. The first one is my crazy course sale is back. So I only run this Valentine's Day and Black Friday. So you can get my entire Heal Your Breakup course, which means that is all of the mini courses put together. It is four modules, 24 video lessons, a 45-page workbook, the 90-day journal, all of that for only $99. So it's normally $197 and starting now when you listen to this through the night of Valentine's Day, you can get it for $99. That's an insane deal because it's everything you need step-by-step to walk through your breakup. So I will put the link to grab that in the show notes. Definitely don't miss it because again, it will not be on sale again until Black Friday, long time from now. The second thing, if you have missed it on my Instagram this Sunday, so meaning on Valentine's Day, I am co-hosting a workshop with Jack Gold, who has been a guest on this podcast, and we wanted to put together something for our community for Valentine's Day because we know the anxiety and fear and loneliness that comes from Valentine's Day when you're going through a breakup or when you're single. So we are hosting what's called a date with self-love. We're so excited about it. And again, this will be actually on Valentine's Day. We are going to ask you to create your perfect date, which means we want you to bring candles. We want you to bring flowers for yourself. We want you to bring a card for yourself. And we are going to go over self-love because at the end of the day, that's always the best way to celebrate love is for yourself and especially on a day where you're probably not feeling the best. So it's going to be on Zoom. It's going to be an intimate group. We are very much looking forward to it. I will put the link in the show notes, but you definitely don't want to miss this. And I cannot, and I'll cover this in this episode, I cannot stress the importance of please do not on Sunday morning all of a sudden panic and be like, oh my gosh, it's Valentine's Day and I don't have anything planned. Please don't do that. If you're not going to attend our workshop, please plan something else. So again, it's at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Valentine's Day, a date with self-love. You deserve this. It's only a $40 date. Promise that is going to be well worth it. So let's jump into today's episode. And the first point is actually one that I just covered, but when you have a tougher day during the breakup. And this is, you know, this I'm talking more about ones that you know are coming. So that's going to be your birthday, your ex's birthday, Valentine's Day, anniversaries, all of that. If you know one of those days is coming, please don't 
just keep pushing it off and thinking, oh, I'll survive. I'll make it through that day. It's not going to be that big of a deal. I'd so much rather that you be way over prepared for these kind of days than anything. I get so many messages on Instagram from people that are like, today's my anniversary. Like, how do I make it through the day? First of all, I don't I don't typically get to messages right away. So, you know, by the time I even see the message, it's been a couple of days. But this is something that should be planned ahead for. And this should be a day where you have a plan of attack, you have a plan of action, you have your support system looped in on this, and that's kind of the second tip. But plan things, even if it's I'm going to go for a walk in the morning, I'm going to FaceTime with a friend at night, I'm going to cook myself this dinner, I'm going to watch this movie. Even if it's just you by yourself at home, please plan out your day because you've heard me say this before, if you're just sitting around by yourself thinking you're not going to think of the greatest things. You're going to all you're going to be doing is stewing on the fact that today's my ex's birthday. I'm not spending it with them. I feel so alone. I feel so terrible. So again, plan ahead, be over prepared if possible, and you know, the second point is reaching out to friends for support. And this can be in the process of when you're planning ahead of just, you know, telling your group of friends this Saturday is me and my ex's anniversary. I'm super nervous about it. Can I, you know, is anyone around for a virtual Zoom day or can anyone get together for a walk? And even the fact of you reaching out, even if they can't necessarily like hang out with you, my guess is on that day you're going to be getting a lot of extra support that you need. And remember that you can always ask for that support too. I covered that a couple episodes ago, but if you say like, hey, can you guys please reach out to me on Saturday to check in because I'm really going to need it, that's perfectly acceptable and very much encouraged to help you get through those hard days. The second half of this is if you have an unexpected hard day, reach out to a friend. Don't try to you know tackle it alone. I, Me and my best friend, we used to have like this code. Oh, it's, I mean, it's not necessarily a code word, but we would have this thing where if one of us texted the other one the word spiraling, we would know like, okay, it's time to call. Uh, I would, you know, try to stop what I was doing and and step outside and and make a call to her. So if you guys want to borrow that one, sometimes just writing one word instead of having to, you know, text out, hey, I'm really sad, I'm really struggling. If you just have like a little code word between you and your friends for like SOS, that would be really helpful. Okay, so the next thing that I want to point out is on really hard days, you're going to feel really tempted to cancel all of your plans. You're going to feel really tempted to call out of work because it feels overwhelming. If you have plans with friends, you're going to feel really tempted to cancel them. I will tell you this from very personal experience. Your instinct is going to tell you to just sit at home and be sad all day. And I cannot tell you how important it is to not do that. I know on days like this, it feels impossible to go to work because you can't stop crying or it's just really hard to hold yourself together. And obviously, there are some instances where I say, yes, cancel cancel your plans, call out of work. But for the most part, don't because anything – distractions are really welcomed on these days. So I know it's tough to be at work, but I can guarantee you it's so much better to be at work than to just be sitting at home crying by yourself. It's better to, you know, be able to get your mind off of it as much as possible, even if you're thinking about it like every 30 minutes and you have 20 minutes where maybe you're concentrated on a work task and you don't have to think about it. So just that morning, like if you start feeling like you want to cancel everything that day, say, Kendra told me this was going to happen. Kendra told me I was going to want to cancel it. And she also told me to not do it. Go like basically take contrary action based on how you, not based on how you feel, I should say, and go forward with plans because I promise you, you're going to feel better after. Okay. So the next thing that I am going to recommend is to have some kind of mantra. 
So this can be something like this too shall pass. That's like my absolute favorite one is this too shall pass. I always say I want to get that tattooed somewhere. And if you have to just repeat it again and again and again and again and again, that's okay. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Or it's just another day. This will be especially helpful on days like Valentine's Day or Christmas, your anniversary, birthdays, just reminding yourself like it's just another day or what, you know, it's Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. That's all I need to worry about is that today is Tuesday. And then another idea is the serenity prayer. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That one is really important because it just reminds you like where to put your focus if you are just obsessing on, I wonder what my ex is doing, I wonder what my ex is doing. The serenity prayer will remind you that all you can worry about is what you're doing that day and you can't necessarily picture what they're doing. But honestly, any kind of reading will help. And this actually stems from when I was in early sobriety, I used to get pretty crazy panic attacks. And one thing that would help me was I would like lay on the carpet and there was the, there's this reading in 12-step programs that I just had heard so many times that I had it memorized and I would just recite it to myself. And having this like repetition and this way to take my mind out of what I was thinking about was really important. So if there's like a quote you really love, if you go on my Instagram and and you see a quote that you really like, snag it and just have it as a little mantra to help you throughout the day. And then the next thing is going to be along the same lines of... As you're, you know, the best time to prepare for a bad breakup day is not on a bad breakup day. So what I mean by that is do the preparation for these bad days when you're feeling good. And this can mean when you're scrolling Instagram or you are on Pinterest or something and you start, you see like a really cool quote that uplifts you, you find this great article you find a really uplifting song, save all of that stuff. And essentially, you want to build like in, a, like in case of emergencies, go here. And if when you are having one of those bad days, pull up one of those songs, pull up one of those quotes, reread that article, anything like that. So that way you have something to go to right away once you find yourself to start spiraling. This one might be a little – this next one might be a little bit surprising to you guys because I'm so into talking about doing the work and healing, but I will tell you the tough days is not the day to process. It's not the day to heal through stuff. And the reason for that is while the healing work is going to make you feel better, it does not feel good in the moment. It actually is very painful in the moment. So when you are already feeling – so sensitive and like a raw nerve on a day that's really tough. That's not the day that I want you to like dig into journaling or dig into your old patterns and all of those things. It's just not the day to do it and that's okay. There's this balance with breakup recovery where we want to balance between distracting ourselves and feeling our feelings. On a day where you're already really, really, really feeling your feelings on one of these tough days, I want you to focus everything you got on distracting yourself. You might think that, okay, if I can just dig a little bit deeper and figure out why I'm feeling so sad today, then maybe it'll feel better. And that's typically not the case. I want this day to be focused on as much distraction as possible. If you are looking for even more help and guidance on your breakup, you can get my step-by-step healing process using my courses. No matter where you might feel stuck in your breakup recovery, there is going to be a course for you. 
If your breakup just happened and you feel completely overwhelmed by the intense feelings, you can get all the tools to get started with my breakup emergency first aid kit. If you feel like you can't stop reaching out to your ex, checking their social media, or obsessing about them, you can get all the tools and accountability you need from Detox Your Ex. If some time has passed after your breakup, but you still feel like you can't let go, I can help you let go of your ex using my Breakthrough Your Breakup course. If you feel like you might be ready to start dating again, but you're scared to get hurt or you don't trust yourself to date, I will give you everything you need to feel confident moving forward in my Moving On After Heartbreak course. If you want all of these things to take you from beginning to end after a breakup, you can grab my course bundle, Heal Your Breakup. And through Sunday, you can get it for 50% off at only $99. All of my courses include videos from me, a workbook, and my breakup journal to help you feel supported and guided through this process. Head to the link in my show notes to take the quiz and find out which course is best for you so you can start moving on, healing, and feeling happy again. You can also grab the link for the 50% off Heal Your Breakup as well as the link to sign up for a date with self-love on Sunday night to help celebrate Valentine's Day in a loving and supportive way. Now back to the episode. This is also not going to be a day to contact your ex especially this day. You know, I'm always a fan of the no contact rule, but especially this day. So let's use birthdays, for example. If you, and trust me, I know the feeling of wanting to text your ex on their birthday. If you haven't heard my story around this, go back to the no contact episode and I I tell a story about this. But it's going to feel really tempting to want to reach out to your ex on their birthday. or. Let's also, we're going to rewind. We're going to use Valentine's Day as an example. It's going to be really tempting to text your ex on Valentine's Day because you spent last Valentine's Day with them, you're seeing love stuff everywhere, and it's going to make it tempting. The issue is if you actually do reach out on Valentine's Day, it's it's an emotionally heightened day. So anything that occurs communication-wise on that day is going to feel heightened. It's going to carry a deeper meaning, and it's likely going to disappoint you even more. For example, if you text your ex, happy Valentine's Day was just thinking about you. You're texting them on the day of love from someone who they used to love or they still love. You're going to expect something emotional back. And if they don't reply or if they say, thanks, you're going to be even more crushed. So just remember that the tough days are emotionally heightened and any communication that you have on those days is going to feel, it's going to feel more risky. It's more risky to have your expectations not met. So just don't do it. Bottom line, don't do it. And then on another note, If it's your birthday, if it's Valentine's Day, and you find yourself days leading up to it just obsessively thinking about if your ex is going to reach out to you, I'm going to really encourage you to block their number on that day. And this is not a forever thing. There's nothing wrong with blocking them forever. It's a tool that I recommend to people. But If you're not comfortable doing like a permanent block, I really encourage you to block them on that day because the problem is this day, again, is already going to be really hard for you. And if every time you hear your phone vibrate or go off, you're going to, it's like, it's going to put you in this heightened sense of anxiety where you're constantly thinking, oh, is that them? Is that them? And every time you look at your phone and realize it's not them, you're going to feel super disappointed. So by blocking them, you'll at least just know that, okay, I'm not hearing from them today. And I think even though that'll still be disappointed, it'll take away that heightened anxiety, which you do not need that day. The next point I want to bring up is please do not give yourself a hard time because you're having a tough day. So often, and I've done this myself, I still do it if I'm, you know, if I wake up and my anxiety is a little bit higher than normal or I'm just not feeling great, 
I typically go into why do I feel this way? Why am I not happy? There's not really anything even that wrong. Why can't I snap myself out of it? I try to do X, Y, or Z to snap myself out of it. And then I just end up getting really frustrated with myself. Uh, And I make it way worse than it needs to be because – You're going through a breakup, of course you're going to have tough days. You're also a human being, so of course you're going to have really tough days. But the problem with this is you're already having a hard day. You're already feeling sad or lonely or missing your ex. The last thing you want, like I promise you, is guilt and shame and frustration at yourself. Because if you feel frustrated for having a bad day, it doesn't take away the fact that you're having a bad day. It just adds frustration on top of it. So tell yourself, I'm having a tough day. That's okay. Just That can be another mantra, like I talked about in the beginning, that you can add to your repertoire. But please, if you catch yourself feeling guilty, frustrated, shameful for being upset on that day, drop it. Okay, so when it comes to what should you actually do on that day, aside from plan ahead, call friends, those kinds of things, this is also going to be the day to do something really, really nice for yourself. And this can be a variety of things. This can be making yourself your favorite breakfast, like putting on your favorite pair of – like your favorite clothes that are super comfy for you. Just making your day as comfortable and like loving and luxurious as as possible. So if you have like nice wine glasses, bust those out. If you're at the grocery store and you're like, do I get the expensive cheese or the cheaper cheese? Like get the expensive cheese that day. Just make your day as positively heightened as possible. And then you can also take it a step further of – booking something for yourself, buying something for yourself. I get so many rad examples from my Facebook group, but one woman in the group said to that she took the money. This was for her ex's birthday. She took the money that she was planning on spending on her ex's birthday present and she bought herself something using that money, which I freaking love that idea. And I've shared about this on stories, but one of my coaching clients, she on her and her ex's would be anniversary and they actually had talked about getting engaged around that time. So she was really dreading that day, but she literally just she had a girlfriend over, they had wine, like they had like this really nice night and then she bought herself a ring, which I love so much and she's like I'm going to give myself this, you know, commitment to myself ring that day. Basically, this is the day to really treat yourself. I, I, I promise this is going to be the day to splurge, to do something you've been really wanting to, uh, try that new recipe you've been eyeing for a long time to treat yourself, but whatever that looks like. Okay, and then the – almost wrapping up here, but – The next thing is be super aware of what you are consuming. So naturally, when you're having a tough day missing your ex, I don't know why the human brain works like this, but this is how it works. When you're having a really bad day missing your ex, that's going to be the time that you're going to go like look at old photos of you guys. You're going to want to go through your old text messages or you're just going to lay on the couch and start thinking about all the great memories that you guys had. For whatever reason, that's what we do to ourselves. And it, as you can imagine, it makes it way worse to, you know, start going going down that. So if you can try to remember, okay, I'm going to feel tempted to look at photos, but I know I shouldn't. Please like don't please don't go through old photos that day. I even remember on my ex's birthday, I made my best friend change my Facebook password because I didn't trust myself not to go on that day and look at like if there was any potential women that were wishing him happy birthday on his Facebook wall. So, if you can like Put away your old photos of your ex with like lock and key, give access to your friend instead. Whatever you can do to like kind of keep yourself in a little bubble would be really good. And 
I also think as much as you can, like avoiding social media on certain days, especially with Valentine's Day coming up, we all know that when we go on when we go on social media on Valentine's Day, all we're gonna see is a lot of tributes to partners. A lot of people are just going to be posting that. So probably not the day to go on social media. But in general, just like be really aware of what you're consuming. Please don't watch The Notebook on Valentine's Day. Uh, please don't watch, you know, super sad movies like that. If you guys haven't seen, I, I have a – my newest blog post on the website is like break up safe TV shows and movies – consume something like that on that day. Don't consume something that's going to, you know, pick up a wound. And then when it comes to like getting into these spirals, I know that's a really common thing is you get stuck in thinking what they're doing, who they're with, thinking about the fact that your ex is going to be with someone new at some point in the future, all of those things. So like I said in the beginning, The best time to plan for this is when you're not in a spiral. I told you earlier to collect um, motivational quotes and articles and those kinds of things. I also want you to have a toolkit of things that can give you a a happy distraction because when you when you start spiraling, that's like you can catch it. You don't have to dive headfirst into the the rabbit hole of mental spiral. There's stuff you can do to to pattern interrupt. I talk about pattern interrupts. So have like some things that you can go to, whether that's a funny TV show, a favorite TikTok account. TikTok has been like my happy saving grace lately. So finding some accounts that you love on there, uh, having that code word that you send your friend to let them know that you need to talk, go for a walk. But have like make a list of like top five things that you can do to bring yourself out of a spiral or to distract yourself for a little while. That will be really important. And don't try to, you know, make it ahead of time so you're not caught off guard by that. Because the longer you stay in the spiral, the lower you're going to feel. And I know you know that, but just need to remind you of that. Okay. And I promise this is the last thing. The last thing is – if at all, if all fails, go to bed really early. <laughs> this sounds this might sound crazy, but I remember when I first got sober, there were, you know, the the first little bit was was tough to not drink and someone gave me that advice. They're like, "If you're having a hard time, go to bed." You know, like make the day end a little bit earlier by going to bed at 8 o'clock. You don't have to you know, you don't have to like white knuckle your way through it. And if you need to take a nap that day so the day goes by a little bit quicker, that's that's okay too. Uh, this, you know, the tough days, I think you've picked up from this episode, the tough days don't need to be like the bright, shiny example of what it looks like to healthy, to heal through a breakup in a healthy way. This is like survival days and and that's okay. Like I don't typically recommend going on TikTok to heal your breakup, but on one of these days, like heck yeah, if you need to spend a couple hours laughing at videos on your phone, please do it. So I hope that was helpful. Again, I hope to see you guys this Sunday at the workshop and please promise me that you have something planned. If you're not going to come to the workshop, please tell me you have something planned because the last thing I want you to do is to spend it by yourself and forget that there's a lot of supportive people out there who want to love on you and give you the support that you need. So just remember, Valentine's Day can be just another day. It's going to pass. Monday will arrive. And then on Tuesday, a new episode of this will come out. So I will see you guys then. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you loved it, I hope you'll leave me a review and share with your friends. If you're interested in learning more about my course, Heal Your Breakup, or I take you step-by-step through my entire healing process, you can find more info at my website, breakupbestie.com. And if you're new, don't forget to join our private Facebook group so you can connect with other women going through the same thing and seek support. You can search Breakup Bestie Support Group on Facebook to join. Lastly, if you're not already following me on Instagram, I share new tips and support every single day. You can find me at your Breakup Bestie. 
Most importantly, hang in there, stay connected with loved ones, be nice to yourself, and remember, it's all going to be okay. I promise.